We've already looked at one-way data and how to organize one-way data in a data table. Now we want to talk about different ways that we can visualize that one-way data, two of which are going to be bar graphs and pie charts, and that's going to be the focus of this video. So let's say, for example, that we have this one-way data table here. And this data table shows us the host cities for the Summer Olympic Games. We have the host city and country, so Athens, Greece, Paris, France, the cities and countries for each Summer Olympic Games going back to 1896. What we want to do is summarize this one-way data by continent. Obviously, it's great that we have this super long list here of information, but what we're really trying to do is get a feel for how often each continent has hosted the Summer Olympic Games. So what we could do is we could actually simplify the one-way data that we have into a simpler table. So for example, we could count up the number of times that each continent has hosted the game. So for example, North America, we could say they've hosted once, twice, three, four, five, six times. So we can see North America has hosted six times. We could do that for each continent and then summarize our results in a separate one-way table. And we would see that we could get a count by continent for the summer games. So let's just go ahead and call this the summer games here. Already, we've simplified the data in our original one-way table significantly. And we just have this smaller one-way table of the number of times each continent has hosted the summer games. But there are other ways that we can visualize this. For example, we could make a bar graph out of this data. We want to start here by creating a chart. So we could draw some lines like this, and we could label these as 0, 5, 10, 15, and 20. And then we could go ahead and start sketching in a bar that matches each of the continents in our one way table. So, for example, Europe has hosted the Summer Games. 16 times. So we could draw a bar up to about 16, and we could go ahead and call that Europe. Notice that the bar starts at the bottom of the chart and extends all the way up to about 16 here based on this vertical axis. North America's hosted the game six times, so we could go ahead and draw another bar next to the first one. It starts at the bottom and goes up to about six, and we could call this one. North America. Asia has hosted the games three times, so we could draw a bar at about three and call that Asia. Australia has hosted twice, so we'll call this Australia. And then South America has hosted once, so we could call this South America. And this is now a bar graph that represents the data in the original one way table. So the reason that this is so helpful is because it can give us quickly a great visual picture of the data that's in this table. So if we're given this huge table to start with, yes, we have all the information here, we have all the detail, and we can count up the continents, we can look at the dates, we can sort of think about and analyze what we see in here, but we can't just glance at this and get a quick visual picture. So for example, if I gave you this table and said, who's hosted more Summer Olympic Games, North America or Australia, you might be able to see it just at a glance, but you'd need to go through and scan and count the number of times North America has hosted, then go back through the table and count the number of times Australia has hosted. But if we have a bar graph of that information, we can see right away North America's bar is higher than Australia's bar. So we know immediately it's hosted more times. Even if we didn't have this vertical axis over here on the left, we would know that North America has hosted more than Australia simply because the bar is bigger. We can also get estimates from the bar graph. So even when every increment of this vertical axis here isn't marked off, so we only have increments of five, not every increment of zero, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, we can still say right away, that Europe has hosted more than 15 times and less than 20 times, because we can see that the bar extends above 15, but doesn't make it to 20. And we could probably guess that it's hosted about 16 or 17 times based on where that bar is. 
Same thing here with North America. We know immediately it's hosted more than five times, but fewer than 10 times, and we would probably guess that it's hosted six times, maybe seven if we're not sure. And we can see immediately that Asia, Australia, and South America have each hosted less than five times. Asia the most, then Australia, then South America. So this is just a great visual way to summarize a lot of data. We can also build bar graphs horizontally. So this bar graph is really vertical because the bars extend up and down, they extend vertically. But we could also build a horizontal bar graph. So instead of sketching our lines here horizontally, instead we would sketch them vertically like this. And then just like we marked off our increments here, we would mark them off this way. So we could say 0, 5, 10, 15, and 20, like this. And then we could go in and sketch each bar, but this time horizontally. So we could show here Europe extending from 0 all the way up past 15 to 16 here in the same way that Europe extended from 0 up to 16 here. And so then we could go ahead and call this Europe. We know that North America is hosted six times, so we would draw that bar up past five. So that would look like about this, and we would call that North America. Asia has hosted three times, so we could sketch that in there. Australia twice, so this would be Australia, and then South America once. And so we could draw that in and label South America. And this is the exact same bar graph as the one we drew up here, except that this is a horizontal orientation for a bar graph instead of a vertical orientation because the bars extend horizontally from left to right. And just like the first bar graph, this gives us a quick visual picture of the data that was in the original table, and we can make quick conclusions about the data, like the fact that Europe has clearly hosted the most games by far. Keep in mind that when we build these bar graphs, not always, and you certainly don't have to do it this way, but it is common to show the largest bar here on the left in a vertical bar chart extending out to the smallest bar on the right, or to show the largest bar here at the top in a horizontal bar chart extending down to the smallest bar down at the bottom especially if the order of the individuals here doesn't really matter. So sometimes, for example, we can build a bar chart that shows data for the months of the year. So January, February, March, April, May. In a situation like that, where the order of the individuals is important, we would maybe expect it to be in calendar year order, starting with January, extending through to December. We would keep the data in that order, and you would see maybe the bars go up and down, for example and it would make more sense to have January and then February and then March. But in this case, the fact that we have Europe, North America, Asia, Australia, South America doesn't really make any difference. We just as easily could have had Australia, North America, Asia, Europe, then South America, and it would have been just as logical. And so in that case, when it doesn't really matter what the order is, it's nice to arrange the data so that the largest bar is either on the left or at the top, because that just allows us to really quickly get a visual picture of whichever category has the most data down to whichever category has the least. Another great way to visualize one-way data is with a pie chart. And in a pie chart, what we're really doing is we're graphing each of these values as a percentage of a circle, or you can think of it as a piece of a pie. The way that we do that is first by finding the total of this count here of the values we have. So again, we're going to use this summary here of Summer Olympic Games by host continent. So if we add up the total of all these counts, 16 plus 6 is 22, plus 3 is 25, plus 2 is 27, plus 1 is 28. So the total count is 28. Then what we want to do is figure out the percentage of the total that each count represents. So Europe hosted 16 of the 28 total games. So if we take 16 divided by 28, we get approximately 57%. If we take 6 divided by 28, so 6 divided by 28, we get approximately 21%.
If we take 3 divided by 28, we get about 11%. Here we get about 7%. And 1 divided by 28, we get about 4% approximately. What we want to do then is sketch a circle, or again, you can think about it as a pie, and shade in about 57% of the circle to represent Europe. So here's what that would look like. We would take a circle and we'd sketch about 57% of it, and that would represent Europe. And it's really helpful when you're building a pie chart because it's hard to tell that this piece is exactly 57% it's really helpful to give some extra indicator. So the fact that this represents Europe, we could put 16 here to indicate that it's Europe. And then North America has hosted about 21% of the time. So 21% of the area of a circle looks approximately like this. And we could go ahead and put a six there to indicate North America. 11% of the area of a circle is about this much more. And that's Asia, which has hosted three times. And then Australia at 7% of the total area has hosted twice. And South America has hosted once. And so we could put a one. The other thing that's great to include with a pie chart is a key. So notice that we put here each continent in a different color. If we had done them all the same color, you wouldn't be able to see the boundary between each section of the pie. So you always do them in different colors, and you usually organize them if you can, and again, if the order doesn't matter, largest to smallest. So notice here that we have this biggest piece here for Europe, and then the next biggest piece is North America, the next biggest is Asia, then Australia, then South America, in the same way that we organized the bar chart from largest to smallest. And so we'll go ahead and call this our pie chart. As I said, we also want to include a legend so that we can tell that this 16 portion here actually represents Europe. So because we have these color coded, we could color code our legend and just say here that red is Europe, that this is North America in yellow, that white represents Asia, and that we have then Australia, in light blue and South America in dark blue. The last thing I want to talk about is that bar graphs are also a great way for displaying data side by side. So let's say here that we have data about not only the Summer Olympics, but also the Winter Olympic Games. If I wanted to, I could display both summer and winter data side by side in a bar chart. Obviously, I could add things together. So for example, I could add Europe's pieces together, 16 and 14, and get 16 plus 14 is 30, and then just show one bar for Europe that says they've hosted 30 times. But it would be much more interesting to keep the detail and display both side by side. So the way that we would do that is, again, we would sketch lines here if we're going to do a vertical bar chart. Notice that the largest value across both data tables is still 16, and the smallest is 1. So we can go ahead and label these axes here, 0, 5, 10, 15, and 20. If we go up to 20, then our max value of 16 will still be contained within the chart. So we're good there. And then what we want to do is, remember, we already plotted or sketched the data for the Summer Olympic Games. So for the Summer Olympics here, we said Europe has hosted 16 times, that this was North America hosting six times, that this was Asia hosting three times, Australia twice, and South America once. So this is the same bar chart that we had before for the Summer Olympic Games. But now what we can do is display data about the Winter Olympic Games side by side with the data about the Summer Games. So for example, for Europe, we could go ahead and plot this count of 14 to say that Europe has hosted the Winter Games 14 times. So we would go ahead and plot that 
starting down at the bottom again and rising up to 14, just below the 15 line, to indicate that Europe has hosted the Winter Games 14 times. North America has hosted the Winter Games six times, so we could go ahead and plot that next to their summer total. And then Asia has hosted the Winter Olympics three times, so we could go ahead and plot that there. Notice that Australia and South America don't appear on our Winter Olympic chart, and that's because neither of those continents has ever hosted the Winter Olympics. And that's another important point to make about bar charts. If the count for something is zero, you just show no bar at all. So because Australia has never hosted the Winter Olympics, we'll just leave this spot blank. We won't show a bar for the Australian Winter Olympics. That'll indicate to us that they've hosted zero times. And because it'll also be missing for South America, we'll know that South America has hosted the Winter Olympics zero times as well. Now, just like with a pie chart, we want to indicate a legend for this bar chart because we want to make sure that people know that this red color here represents Summer Olympics and yellow represents Winter Olympics. So we could go ahead and indicate here with color Summer Olympics and then with color Winter Olympics like this so that people know. And sometimes people will shade in these bars instead of with color with some kind of a pattern. For example, if they were going to use maybe dots or something, they might say that the pattern for Summer Olympics is dots and then the pattern for Winter Olympics is lines this way. So if you don't have color, you can still pattern the bars differently so that you can have the legend and see the difference between Summer and Winter Olympics. And just like before, this bar chart gives us a lot of really great information at a glance. So we can say similar things as before. For example, Europe has clearly hosted by far the most Summer Olympics and the most Winter Olympics and clearly has the largest combined total because even if we added the totals together for North America, if we imagine stacking this yellow bar on top of the red bar, it wouldn't even reach, we don't think, the yellow bar here for Europe. So Europe has hosted the largest combined total by far. We can see individual data about the Winter Olympic Games that Europe has hosted the most, then North America, then Asia, and that Australia and South America have never hosted the Winter Olympics. We can compare within a continent, so we can see that Europe has hosted more Summer Olympics than it has Winter Olympics, and that both North America and Asia have hosted an equal number of Summer and Winter Olympics between them, with North America hosting a larger number than Asia. So just remember that when you have one-way data, especially when you have a lot of it, you have a really big table of one-way data, that there are visual ways to represent that data, including bar graphs and pie charts. If it's hard from your original table to get a really quick understanding of what the data is telling you, you might want to create a visual representation in either a bar graph or a pie chart. Once you've made your chart, whether it's a bar graph or a pie chart, make sure to just double check your chart and ask yourself whether someone would be able to tell what the chart is representing if all they had was the chart and not the data. That's where things like legends are important. For example, in this chart, we needed to indicate that red represented Summer Olympics and yellow represented Winter Olympics. Or remember with the pie chart, we put the count on each section of the pie and included a legend as well. It's also really helpful to include a title for the chart. So for example, a helpful title for this chart might be Olympic Games Host and then maybe by continent. This way we know that we are graphing in our chart the host cities of each Olympic Games and that we're categorizing by continent, which is why we see then the continents listed across the bottom here, Europe, North America, etc. We have our axis labeled here so we can get a pretty accurate picture of the count for each of these bars, and we have a legend here to distinguish between summer and winter games.